everybody. Welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. Thank you so much for tuning in to Pike TV today for another exciting episode centered around art and drawing. Uh, it's something that I'm passionate about. Drawing for me is a release. I get to escape. Um, some people like to do other things, uh, fish, maybe you like to go on uh, hikes. Hikes is a really uh, a great way to get out and just sort of let the week and times and work and everything just sort of, you know, dissolve. And uh, we're going to actually focus on that today. Hiking is an amazing, wonderful, and very inexpensive um, um, opportunity we have around us here. Living in Easter K Kentucky here at the threshold of the, of the Appalachian Mountains, we are absolutely blessed beyond measure with all the things we can do for outdoors. Um, hiking really is something that, you know, if you maybe could do on your own or with someone else, um, you get out and see the scenery. There's lots of places around our region where you can go to to hike. Um, there's lots of different state parks and different areas where that accommodate hikers and camping and the outdoors. So today we thought, well, let's focus on that a little bit. Since it is such an asset to our region and community, let's uh, focus on drawing maybe someone hiking, a cartoon hiker with some landscape. Now what I'm going to be using today is going to be a couple things. These may or may not be around you there at home. If you are an artist, you like to draw, you may have access to them. You don't need anything fancy. If you have a Crayola brand, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is applying this in a way that you get a certain result out of it. That's what art's all about. Anyone can take a stick of graphite and they can go over to a clear canvas and they start sketching. Anyone can do that. but. The difference is between someone who creates something that other people want to look at against someone who is just messing around is how the person applies that medium. Really that's what art is all about. So if you go step by step with me and follow along with me there at home, you can do exactly what I'm doing and hopefully at the end you and me both have something that we're proud of. So what we have today is basic paper. We're going to be using a pencil. I, every time I use this, it throws folks off a little bit because it's a mechanical pencil. This is just a pencil. Uh, it does have blue lead in it though, which is a little different. The blue lead is, uh, helps me to see uh, once I actually go to pick up a line or sketch a line out. Um, sometimes it picks up better than others uh, on the camera, but I'm using a pencil. The other thing that I'm going to be using is going to be watercolor. Now this is a set of travel watercolor uh, cakes. Now, we call these cakes, but each one of these are actually individual small units of color. And the color actually, you could take this with you in the kit, um, sometimes gets a little messy. Sometimes whenever you use it, as you can see mine here, uh, you mix up in this tray above and all of these are your cakes here below. So when you mix enough, sometimes these start to smear and then, you know, it does get a little messy, but um, so I'm a little embarrassed by the condition of my cakes, but uh, that's my watercolor kit. Um, this, the other thing we're going to be using is, is a brush. Now, um, there's two different versions or kinds of ways to go about brushing and applying um, water to watercolor. The first is you can use a traditional brush with sable hair or synthetic hair on it and dip it in water and apply the pigment onto the paper. And the other version of that is an uh, aqua brush. This saves on time. I'm not promoting any certain brand of aqua brush, but this is actually a brush that has the water inside of it. Um, so you don't have to go and change uh, water constantly. You don't have to always go and uh, you know uh, clean your brush out a lot with, the, with using more water. The water stays in here, and then as you squeeze this when you're painting, uh, the water will come out, and it's just easier and more accessible way to watercolor. So we're going to be using these mediums together to create something, but our last one, of course, is going to be an ink pen. So if you have a pen at home, that's going to be handy too. Um, any type of ink pen will do. So my idea for today was for us to first apply a setting. Whenever I illustrate children's books, that's something that is just as important as a character in the story. The setting. The setting sometimes can actually be a character in the story. If you think of Star Wars, if you think of maybe Little Mermaid, the setting where it takes place is very important. So our hiker has to have a setting. So we're going to give a setting for our hiker first thing. So I always keep a reference photo near me. I keep this so I can actually see uh, what I'm drawing. Um, and, and it's really handy today with tablets and different devices. So I'm pulling from this and drawing here. So let's go ahead and get started. So based on what I'm looking at, I want to draw a scenery. Uh, the scenery, first I'll start out with drawing these mountains. So just start at the edge of your paper and you're going to draw these series of these lines coming up just like that and stopping. The small little triangle points. Then you're going to go up again. Do another series of these coming down 
and stopping. So there's one and two. And then we're going to add one more over here, three. So that gives us a series. There's three mountain ranges here on our paper so far. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some smaller um, foliage here. So just do these little series of these little tiny, almost like you're drawing uh, puffs of clouds. Um, you can see what I mean here. There's these little jagged edges. You're going to do a whole series of these going all the way across. Variations of this. Go up and down with your pencil, making various lines, different shapes, um, going all the way across our mountain range. These are the smaller trees at the bottom of our mountain range. So we have this series going on here. So now you can see we have a series of these trees, the mountains in the background. So we need to add a few more things to actually give this the effect of being outdoors. We're going to start over here again at this point and you're going to draw a line. Now notice what I've done here. I've brought the line in, back out. I'm starting to give curves in this line. This is going to be a river. So you're going to draw this line, add a little bit of curvature to it so that it goes all the way across our mountain range, all the way across where we've drawn our foliage, and we have this nice river running up this valley. Start back here again. Now, if you've watched past episodes, you know what this is. This is our vanishing point. This is where everything goes into. So we're going to actually draw a line coming up on this side, but notice what this line does. It does not follow this line at the top exactly. It widens out as it goes. So this gives us a vanishing point. Everything goes into this line. This is the farthest thing we can see with our eyes. Over here on this side, we're actually going to put just a small tree. So you can put more of those puffs of uh, looks like clouds. But instead of actually just having this go down to nothing, over here we're going to add some limbs. So when you make these puffs go all the way around, and then you're going to add a few limbs coming down from the tree. And this will give the effect that it's up close and more perspective that we can use. So there's our, our little tree here off to the side. Now we have everything that we need. Now we're going to apply our, our figure, our character into the setting, and that's going to be our camper or our hiker. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start over here on the far left side of our paper, and we're going to just use the circle method. It's the method I use every time I draw something on the art workshop. It's a method that I have to use because it helps me to build a character from the ground up. So the first thing we're going to do is do a circle. This is going to be the head. So just draw a circle. That's all. It's more like an oval maybe. From there what you're going to do is you're going to draw what looks like a marshmallow. Literally, a marshmallow. Not a, it's not a square. It's rounded edges. So something like that. And then from here what you're going to do is you're going to draw a straight line coming down and another straight line coming down. These are the feet. So far this doesn't look very much like a hiker. It almost looks like a stick figure, but let's keep going. Down at the bottom of this line you're going to add an oval. At the bottom of this line you're going to add another oval. Mine's cut off a little bit, but you can see how I'm doing it. Now let's go back up to the top part of our marshmallow. On this side we're going to draw a line coming down. And over here we're going to draw another line coming down and then out. This line is what's going to be holding uh, the walking stick. Okay. So now we have everything we need exactly to draw this, but we need to start putting actual detail into the drawing. How we do that is we start at a certain point and work up. We're going to start in this particular instance with the head. So at the top of the head, what we're going to do is we're going to start right here at the top and put a line going across, okay? Once you have that line, I want this is a toboggan. Our, cam our camper is wearing a toboggan. It's getting cooler out, so he's going to be wearing a toboggan. It goes all the way across the top of this circle and back in. See how I've done that? Now we're going to work on the face. Drop down below a little bit and add some hair coming out from underneath the toboggan, just like that. A couple of fruffs of hair. We're going to draw the one eye here, another eye here. So we have two eyes, and we're going to draw the nose. It's really simple. It's just building from the ground up. Once we have the nose, we can add the mustache. He's going to have a big giant mustache. So we go out from this side and back in, out from this side and back in, just like that. So now you have uh, the mustache on our camper. Below here, we're going to add a beard. So we're actually going to be putting a beard on him. So just like you did the fruffs with the, uh, I actually do this in black so you can see it just a little bit better. Maybe this will help out some more. So 
so here we have the, the beard coming up like that. And then on this side, the beard, there's the nose. Okay, now we're at the, the, the beard on here, which comes up to the edge, a couple of fronts of hair connecting here, and then the beard's going to come down on each side to a point, just like that. Okay, using it with a pen helps you to see a little bit better, but you should be doing this in pencil at home. He has the ear sticking out right here on the side. Now what we're going to do is actually fill in the toboggan a little bit more too so you can see it. This comes up over top of the head. There's a couple of frills of lines here to show that it's bending and back down. On this side we're going to draw the side of his face here and just a little bit of his ear sticking out there. Now let's work on what the camper's wearing. He's got on a uh, big giant backpack with all of his gear. Let's draw the straps on his arms first, coming down on each side, just like that. Once we have that, we'll draw his vest. So you come down just below the beard and draw that shape, like an upside down letter C. A straight line coming down will do, right there. At the bottom, we want this to seal off, so we have his body. And let's give him some pockets. So he's got some little pockets in his vest. All this is is a square with a little shape in, in, inside of the square. It looks like another square in a straight line. It gives the effect of pockets. Once we have this, we can start working on his arms. Start over here on this arm first. It comes down and out. Just follow the line that you've drawn. Underneath it, another line. Now we can draw his hands. A lot of folks have problems with hands. If you take it slow, you can do it. Start with the thumb first. There's his thumb. Now he's going to draw the, now we're going to draw the staff on here. So the staff comes up. It's a walking stick. And down. All the way down to here to a point. If you can do a straight line, that's great. You may have to use a ruler. Now let's put his fingers over here on the opposite side. And we have a hand. On the other side, his hand is just out and about. It's just hanging down. So we'll draw the two lines coming down, similar to the other side. Seal it off with his shirt. And another thumb and a few fingers. Now our camper needs his backpack, so we'll work on that next. Go right behind it, the head and draw this shape coming down and in, just like that. Once you have that then, come inside of it just a bit and finish it off. You can add a few details into the backpack too. You can put a few lines here, maybe a couple straps coming around the side. Now we need to work on his pants. Now for his pants, we have just two lines coming down, one, two. Follow the line that you drew earlier, like the stick figure, and then the other leg, down, up. Now once we have these four lines, we can actually draw the shoes in. I go over and start on this side first. I'm going to draw the bottom cuff of his pants, another bottom cuff of his pants, and now the boot. The boot's really simple. The oval that you drew, follow the back line of it first, and then come down and fill it in. Same for the other side. Follow the back oval first, and then you fill it in. Now we have a little camper. He's walking, we have the scenery built in, so we're gonna use the watercolor now. What I like to do before I start anything with watercolor is go ahead and trace out a little bit harder so you can see exactly what you're doing. And I'm gonna do this for you at home so it matches the hiker. When you're using watercolor, it's a really good idea to dilute the water into the uh, cake of the watercolor so you can get a light color first and then go darker. Um, that's true probably I would say with every medium. Light to dark's the best. The reason for that is it's really harder to pull pigment off of something than it is to put it on it. So if you go from light to dark you have more uh, opportunities to make changes to the variation of the hue of the color or you have opportunities to make a little few changes to uh, shadowing and light too. So I've I went ahead now and I've inked entire the entire uh, drawing, and now we'll start to apply the watercolor. Now I don't want to get really, really in depth. I want a touch of color, nothing too major. So what I do is I get my brush out, I squeeze it a little bit to start getting some color in there. Now it's always wise to have a test paper on the side, so when you actually go to start to apply the watercolor, you can see exactly what shade you're getting. Now I don't have one right now at my disposal, but I'm going to go ahead and trust that I can pull this shade where I want it. And I'm just doing a touch of color, nothing too much. 
So you can see how the water color, if you add more color, I'm sorry, if you add more water, um, you're going to get a lighter color. And that's what I want first. I want it to go light to dark. So now I can go over to the side here with the other trees and add that color in. There's, it's a little darker now since I'm getting closer to uh, where I'm, I would be if I was standing here in this scenery. If I was standing here, these colors would be a little more, a little more vibrant than the ones further off. I'm just going to add a touch of color going all the way around the top of this row of trees here. Just a little bit, nothing too much. Now what I want to do is go back. I want to pull some more green in and I'm going to actually go across the tops of the ridges of the mountains. I'm going to put a touch of color going all the way across. Pull some more. Notice that down in this portion I was a, used a little bit darker, a little bit more pigment, a little bit more watercolor to show that this is maybe uh, shadowed in a little bit, almost as if it's a, um, a, a, a draw or a spur on the mountain. The rest of this will be a little lighter. Now I'm going and around and I'm putting green first on everything. I'm just touching, touching green onto my drawing. Um, if I had, let's say, a few hours to work on this, that would be great. Um, I would go back and add variations of this green and get a lot of different types of colors. Now I'm going to work on my hiker. I'm going to put a light shade of gray, which is a mixture really of just a little bit of blue and a touch of, a touch of brown and white together. It gives me this type of gray. And I'm going to put it on top of his uh, toboggan. So there we go. The top of his toboggan is filled in. Now for his vest, I'm actually going to use a yellowish color. This is yellow and green and a little bit of that blue I just pulled out. And I'm just going to touch it with a little bit of color. I'm not trying to, to really, really, really go in depth here. And if we had time, we could definitely do that. But right now, I just want to touch a little bit of color on him. Put some blue for the straps. This is a little bit more uh, color than I wanted. So this is a good example of you should test out your color <laughs> before you put it down. But the good thing about watercolor, the more you use with it, the lighter it gets. So here I am continuing with this because I like that consistency. We're going to work on his pants here a little bit now. Give him some brownish top pants to wear. Just touching this with a little bit of color adds a lot to the drawing. You can see things start to come to life a little bit. Your drawing will take shape. Um, a lot of good times though with watercolor, it's good to let portions of it dry and then go back to it again and add more to it. This way you can actually have a little bit of variation in, in the uh, hues of the color. So in this case though, I'm letting it dry once and then we're going to stop. But if we had more time, we could really go in depth with it. I'm going to make his shirt a different color green. This is actually going to be a turquoise type color for his, vet, for his shirt. And now for his skin, we'll go ahead and apply a little bit of brown and a little bit of white to this and a touch of red to get the, the proper uh, skin tone I want. So here we go, putting it on his face and around his eyes a little bit. Just touching in there. I don't want to put a whole lot. Now I need to work on the blue because we do have a river here running. So I'll go around the edges first, all around the edges, putting the blue in. I'm leaving spots out intentionally because I want to go back when I'm finished uh, and, and add a little bit more color. This is something that you can do with any watercolor kit. You do not need anything fancy. Um, I would suggest actually getting a cheaper, a cheaper watercolor to start out with and just play around with the colors. Now I'm being sort of messy with this particular drawing. That means I'm just putting it down, but I'm, I'm doing that purposefully because I want, I want to see uh, I want to get it done for you at home, and if I had more time, we could really, really get in depth with the, with the color variation. That's something I love to see with watercolor, is where the whites are, what is left out. Sometimes it's more important on what you don't put in as it is on what you do put in. I know that sounds really like um, um, counter, counter to actually water, you know, applying pigment to something, but it's very true. What you leave out sometimes is just as important as what you put in. So we have this stream going down now. We have our, our hiker who's, who's 
walking about and looking at the beautiful scenery. If you get a chance, please go out and visit some of our local state parks and lo local um, attractions for wildlife and see what all our, our county and region has to offer. You'll be surprised maybe. Um, there's tons of resources around that you can learn from. Go online and search. You'll find that there's all kinds of places here locally that offer amazing opportunities for hiking and outdoor activity. Just everything's at a touch of, touch of your fingertip now and learning about it. So now we're going to put just a little bit more color in. Notice I'm not touching too hard on everything. I'm just giving a slight, slight variation to things. Now I'm going to put a little bit more pigment on the edges of our, rear, of our creek, just out here on the side, bringing that in a little bit more. And as you play around with watercolor, you'll find that um, there's things that will happen on the paper that you don't expect. And sometimes those surprises are good. Sometimes those surprises are very frustrating. But just apply a light coat first and then go back over and add more, building up the drawing as you go. Now, of course, with the sky, you can get an effect from that. You can put, maybe it's a gray sky. Maybe he's, uh, he's looking at clouds are rolling in and, and uh, he's wanting to get, to get back to the campsite before, before it gets really, really bad out. When I'm illustrating a children's book, a lot of times the stories are there for me, so, so I can't really think, think or come up with things that are going on on the page, but um, the fun part is whenever I get to create on my own, and, and, and you can do anything with, with uh, paper and pen. Uh, you can direct sort of like your own movie, but you have a limited budget on what you can spend because it's all at your imagination's uh, disposal. So uh, those of you who like to create, I encourage you to keep doing it. Um, if you'd like to share what you created at home, uh, maybe if you went along with me on some of these little simple exercises using color, um, I'd love to see it. You can send it to me at eplingillustrations at gmail.com or um, you can um, go to Facebook and search for Epling Illustrations. Okay, since we don't have a whole lot of time on our show, what I'll do now is actually speed paint through some of the more portions of the watercolor, adding more to it as we go. So that's what you're going to be watching now. You at home can follow along. Um, it's just remember, go light to dark and you'll be just fine. So that's pretty much sums up our watercolor experiment for today. Um, hiking in the outdoors, it's an amazing, wonderful uh, opportunity we have here. So watercolor is really, really fun to use. It's an easy medium to get involved with. So I, I highly suggest if you're interested in learning how to paint or getting involved with paint, start out with watercolor. Just remember my suggestion for today, always go from light to dark. Now before we finish, there's a special guest I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, be sure though to send in your artwork if you get a chance uh, to eplingillustrations at gmail.com. Okay, so as you can see, watercolor can be a little challenging, but if we had more time, we could actually apply more pigment to this and, and, and it would develop more and more. So if you have any examples at home you'd like to send in to us, eplingillustrations at gmail, and uh, we'll post those here on Pike TV on the art workshop. Uh, we have a very special guest. I, would, I wanted to save some time at the end of this show to, to introduce the viewers to uh, um, Gabriel Michael Ellswick. Hey, Dan. He's a student at UPike. He's a senior this year. He's majoring in art. He's also interning with Epling Illustrations, so he's learning about the publishing industry. He's learning how to work with publishers uh, for illustration deadlines, also different um, private commissions and things like that. So, so it's been it's been great having him on. I just wanted to uh, welcome to uh, the art workshop. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Gabriel, if you tell us a little bit, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. What mediums do you like to work in the most, and um, maybe what your current projects you're working on that you'd like to see published? Well, I'm, uh, I've been uh, past couple of years. I've been working on a comic called Nick and Sally. It's uh, about a girl who uh, discovers she has a monster under her bed. That's my favorite medium. Uh, probably the working is uh, ink. Ink. Yeah, ink. mine too. I've got. I had a chance to read some of the story, and uh, it's it's wonderful. We actually had a class at UPike um, 
it was actually making co com digital comics, which is uh, incorporating a few different mediums, and uh, that's when I was first introduced to your story. And um, it's, it's really well done. It's something that, that I think is going to be uh, a beautiful work in print. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't wait. I can't either. But we, we're really happy to have you on board this semester. Thank you. And we really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, the viewers, you're the most Im important asset to us, and we appreciate having you. So uh, please, if you, if you want to send in your work, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, EplingIllustrations at gmail.com. And um, we, we just appreciate you tuning in. So until next time, um, I'm Christopher Epling for Michael Elzik, and uh, keep yeah. drawing. <laughs>